how to make a table in Excel. So here we start off with a blank um, spreadsheet and we put the values of the independent variable in the column on the far left. In this case, my independent variable is going to be the concentration of sucrose solution. And we must always remember to put the um, uncertainty and units um, in all the headers um, of columns on a table. So in this case, I'm going to open brackets. And on an apple, if you press Alt, Shift, and then the plus symbol, it gives you that plus or minus symbol, um, which, is, gives you, which um, is what you put before the uncertainty. In this case, the uncertainty is going to be 0 0.01. The units are, is molarity, so that's going to be a big M. Okay, now you'll see that at the moment the text is spreading over a few cells. So there's a few things I'm going to do um, to sort that out. First, I'm going to merge and center. What that does is it merges these two cells um, to, into one cell. I'm also going to wrap text, which means that it wraps the text onto more than one line, and I need to make the cell bigger so that it fits all of my text in it. Now I'm going to put in the values of my independent variable. In this case, it's going to be um, the different concentrations of sucrose solution. Now you'll see what Excel does, even if I press, put 1.0 in, when I press enter, it removes that decimal place because it was uh, 0 0.0. Now we need to make sure that all the, the decimal places, or all the values are given to the right number of decimal places. So I'm just going to highlight those values. Then I'm going to use these little buttons here. And you can see I can use those to increase or decrease the number of decimal places that the data is given to. In this case, I want to give it to two decimal places. And I'm going to centralize it. And that makes it easier to read. Now, in the rest of the columns, I'm going to put in the dependent variable data. In this case, it's the percentage change in mass. And my uncertainty is going to be um, plus or minus 1%. Okay. And then I am going to have seven different trials, so seven repeats of the investigation. So I have seven columns. Each one is a different repeat. Now, I'm just going to be copying in um, the data from another table, but you would probably be entering it um, maybe from um, a table that you have uh, written on paper. Okay, so there's my data. Now you'll see that the columns here are far wider than they need to be. So what I can do is I can highlight the cells at the top here. This highlights the entire columns. And then I can adjust the width of one of the columns like that. And then what that will do is it'll adjust the width of all the columns, making them an appropriate size. Now the values at the top here are not centralized. Um, neither is the title, so I'm going to centralize that. Now you can see that the um, the title percentage change in mass, it's still only associated with this cell here, B1. So what I'm going to do is highlight all those cells, and actually another two, and again merge and center. And so now it's spread it out across all of those cells. I'm also going to add a column for the mean, which is a type of average. Now Excel has thousands of different functions that we can use um, to do what we want with numbers. So in this case, we're going to use the function called average, which calculates the mean of um, any data that you want to, uh, want to do that for. So I'm just going to type in AV, gives me the function average, I'll just click on that. So you can see what it does now, it writes the name of the function average and it gives me brackets. So now I have to highlight the columns that I wanted to, sorry, the cells that I wanted to calculate the average of. So I highlight those cells, press enter, and it's calculated the average for me automatically. Now, instead of doing that for every row individually, I can just click on that cell, I can, and drag that down, okay? Now, sometimes it gives you a little warning symbol here, um, formula emits adjacent cells, okay? So it's just saying that there are some cells that uh, it's not calculating the mean of, but that's fine for me. I also want to calculate the standard deviation of each row. And so I'm just going to call that SD here. And again, I can use a function for that. So equals and then ST. 
and it gives me a whole load of different functions. I'm going to use stdev.s because I'm calculating the standard deviation of a sample of data. Again, I highlight the cells I want to calculate the standard deviation of, press enter, and it's calculated the standard deviation for me. Again, I can use this little um, box here to drag the whole box down and it'll calculate the standard deviation for all the rows. Now this is giving um, a calculation to far more decimal places than uh, than I need or that I want because my the mean and the standard deviation should always be given to the same number of decimal places as the raw data. Okay, in this case it's zero decimal places. Now like before these columns are wider than I need them to be so I can just uh, make them narrow and I can centralize it to make it look neater and in order to make the whole table easier to read um, I can highlight it all and I can add all borders okay and uh, now I have my finished table which is ready to be inserted into um, my investigation